Cool, but your boy, what's good? Hold on, let me get a sip of it, you know what I'm saying? Little protein shake, all stupid. What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Johnny Finesse. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the video. Welcome back to the reaction. And today, we're about to watch so much worse than we thought. If you're new to the channel or haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button, y'all. We on the road to 550 subscribers. Subscribe. 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 And hit the bell notification too, so you don't miss the thing again. But oh man, damn. My fucking back. What the fuck? But with that being said, let's get into it. It's November 2nd, 1991. The Warriors are facing off against the Kings in an early season matchup. Golden State is coming into the season as one of the top teams in the Took West the and are looking to make some noise early on. The Kings, well, the Kings are trash. In fact, the Kings were so bad that by halftime, the Warriors had broken an NBA record that was sure to never be broken again. Kings in my favorite A 47 team. point lead by halftime. 47 points shit this i mean that shit is disgusting broke, broken. it's disrespectful these men have families too you know but hey at least no other team has ever felt the humiliation and defeat that this poor king's team felt on that november no Leba has the rebound Burke will dribble it out and that will do it for a very forgettable first half the shit. dallas mavericks lead 77 to 27 largest deficit wow at halftime in the history of the NBA. That's tough. I never remember that. My That's tough. God. That's tough. How does this even happen? That's tough. Down 50 points at halftime. And they even win Did the, the Clippers yet. even show up? I mean, yeah. I get that Serge Ibaka gave Kawhi Leonard an elbow that would have made The Rock proud, so he ain't playing. But the Mavs don't have Porzingis either. So on paper, this seems like it's a pretty there. even matchup. But, um. It's not. That I guess not. That Luka Paul George. Nigga. Yeah, he's there. That Ibaka, magic nigga. Pat Bev, Reggie Jackson, Zubats, Will. Yep, the gang's all here. Well, I mean, they're here, but they didn't show up. Their entire starting five scored a whopping 41 points. That's not at the half. That's for the entire game. And if that's not unfortunate enough, this starting five, who combined for $240 million worth of contracts, shot one for 19 from three. Blow that's 5%. Hey, buddy, that's you pay terrible. me a quarter of a billion dollars, and I'll slap on a jersey so quick and shoot 5% from deep all season long. Just tell me where to sign. Oh, no. Let's take a look at the reincarnated 92 better, Dream Team, or the Dallas Mavericks. In total, 13 players scored, and they shot 89% from the free throw line as a team. But other than that, the Mavericks didn't do anything super spectacular. Dallas played how they usually played. So this is more of a case of the Clippers just going 12 rounds with themselves, which seems to be the identity of this team and this franchise. Now, if y'all recall oh opening night last season, we were all jacked up in anticipation of the Battle of LA. The Clippers versus the Lakers. No one really knew how this game would play out, but it was obvious that this was going to be the NBA's new premier rivalry. Yeah. Well, at least it was supposed to be. <laughs> And by the end of the first <laughs> game, the Clippers got the win and they had all the momentum going forward. And then two months later, the Clips beat the Lakers again. And boy, did things get out of hand quick. Clippers fans were ready to place an order for their 2020 championship banner. They were sure of their team's sheer dominance. Game over for the rest of the league, the Clippers are snapping necks and cashing checks. But after a turbulent season, lack of chemistry, and more load management than a garbage mm -hmm. man, the Clippers got bounced out of the second round of the playoffs in heart-wrenching fashion. Oh my god. Oh my god. He on X Games mode. <laughs> Their flaws were just too glaring to overcome. We talked about this before. You can't just throw a bunch of talent on a team and expect to win a title. You really this can't. is not how championships work. Shut up, Warriors fans. Just stay out of this. You need camaraderie. You need chemistry, leadership. You need each and every player to buy into their role and be open to adjustments at any moment. This is what some of us have been saying all along in regards to this Clippers team. Loaded with talent, they've got size and scoring and defense and all of the tangibles you need to go on a championship run. But they are strikingly lacking in the intangibles department. Also, it doesn't help that Paul George either plays like a first-team All-NBA superstar or a nervous wreck just trying to keep his spot in the rotation. So, what do the Clippers do? They spend the offseason resting and reloading. They part ways with their head coach, Doc Rivers, and sign LeBron James's assistant coach from the 2016 championship run, Tyron Lue. 
They sign Serge Ibaka to be their enforcer down low. They bring in sharpshooter Luke Kennard and sign Nicholas Batum. These are all good moves. Yeah, they right. are now deeper and more experienced than last year. And what better way to show off this new and improved roster than by handing the Lakers a giant <laughs> L on opening nights for the second straight season. They're looking cohesive. They've got a new coach who allows players just to the play to their game, strengths. Bro. Things are looking fantastic. Might as well get those orders ready because we're going to need our 2021 championship banner here ASAP. Wait, I feel like I'm having deja vu. Deja vu. Like all of this already happened before. Like this exact same scenario played out a year ago. And that's because it did. See, the problem it's here isn't the again, Clippers sadly. or Paul George. It's that fans get way ahead of themselves before anything has even happened. More recently, over the past few years, fans have grown uh -huh. accustomed to overreacting to every little oh thing that happens. It really feels like if you don't have a knee-jerk reaction on a game-to-game -game basis, you're falling behind in the news cycle. Paul George hits back-to-back -back threes, and I'll be damned. Pandemic P turned into best shooter in the league. Five minutes later, Paul George airballs a three, and oh wait, never mind, he's trash, knew it all along, Lakers in four. Lakers There's no middle four. ground with this stuff. On opening night, the Clippers beat the Lakers just like they did last year. And just like last year, this means virtually nothing for better or for worse. In that game, PG had 33 points on 72% shooting and hit five threes. Everyone was ready to put the pandemic P talk to bed. Literally one game. Are they dumb? The reason why he got that shit is from being in the playoffs. The year before that, the year before that trash he's good in the regular season but he's not good in the playoffs was enough to sway people from feeling one way to feeling the complete opposite but wait wait incoming monumentally terrible performance by a paul george led clippers and all of a sudden less than a week later and paul george is back to being pandemic p why how does a player's legacy and ability get dwindled down to good and bad performances on a game to game i personally think it's just his mental like his mental, basis. He's fighting his mental Let's be right honest. Now. Whether Paul thing. George gets 35 and 5 in a win on great efficiency or 10 points in a terrible loss, neither of these performances changes his talent and ability yeah, as a nice. player. Like, Paul, Paul George, George is, nice, is an bro. NBA star, and even the best players have bad games. This is mental, For example, bro. here's a stat line one NBA star put up in a game last week. Some fans would even consider Jimmy this Butler. player a superstar. Any guesses on who this player is? Jimmy Butler. Yeah, two points on 0% shooting in 27 minutes of action. And this game came fresh off of a four point performance just five days earlier. Could you even imagine the absolute riot people would be having if Paul George put up these numbers? But this has become a this staple mental, of Paul bro. George and Clippers basketball. The NBA is not good in the spotlight, sometimes literal punching back. So where do the Clippers go from here? Well, for starters, they need Kawhi Leonard in order to succeed. His presence is not just necessary, it is absolutely critical to this team's success. His impact on the game goes far beyond what shows up in the box score. Paul George needs to play more consistently, and they've gotta build some sort of chemistry as a team or they'll be in the shadow of the Lakers for the rest of eternity. So with that, I'll leave y'all with something I created while researching for this video. A chart of some of the best NBA players of all time and the worst losses of their careers. Now pay close attention, because some of these numbers may just surprise you. Enjoy, and as always, until next time. Mm -hmm. 52. Forty-two, damn. Forty. Thirty-seven. Thirty-four. Gotcha, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it's a movie. <laughs> but Alex Caruso up here, one of the greatest niggas of all time. <laughs> the goat. I feel him though. I feel him though. I feel him though. But if you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. You made it to the end of the video, bro. Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss the thing again. You feel me? It's your boy Johnny Finesse, and I'm out of here.